Hello, everyone. Today we're going to have an interview with uh, Kirby Levich about front-end architect position. The interview will take 50 minutes, and then we'll have 10 minutes, 10 minutes to uh, have an answering question uh, session in the end. So all in all, it's going to take one hour. And uh, let's say hi to Kir. Hello, Kir. Nice to, nice to see you here. Nice to have you on this interview. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I'm really uh, glad to be here and to talk about such an important topic in my life, I would say. I think some people in the in the chat uh, should already know Kir because uh, we're colleagues, we work in uh, Zero Plus X, and I believe a bunch of people today uh, who are going to be watching it live are going to be from uh, Zero Plus X. And uh, a bunch of people might actually know Kir because of uh, the SVGO project, the SVG uh, optimization library. Uh, yes, yeah, so is my like a uh, uh, cross, like uh, uh, cross the years. Uh, I've uh, developed it while uh, working for Yandex, like many years ago, and I haven't been able to maintain it for like many many years. But, but I was able to find uh, uh, good maintainers. So yeah. I'm kind of known by Svigio, but but as for today, I'm not involved in the, in the development mm. that much. All right. Yeah. So you're kind of a founder. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the original author, as I like to say. Yeah. But as for the, today, no, not really. Mm. I, I know that a lot of people know about the Svigio MG, uh, because it's yes. as far as I know, it's based on a Svigio. Uh, actually, just today, before this interview, I was talking with my team and letting them know that I'm actually be off for an hour. And I was telling that, oh, I'm going to have an interview with Kier, the creator of SVG. Mm -hmm. And they're like, OK, that sounds familiar. So a lot of people know about you like indirectly. Yeah, uh, so MG is like a separate, let's say, like third party uh, uh, project, maybe even more popular uh, than SVG itself. And don't want to spoil, but we, the maintainers of Asigio might like take over the MG part soon, maybe if if some things mm. will will align. Yeah. So let's all right. But let's on track. Yes. Yes, exactly. Let's uh, get back on track and front end architect. Uh, we're yeah. going to discuss a bunch of things. Who is that? Because I know that you're you're one, and you can explain it uh, the best. Mm -hmm. Who is the front end architect? Yes. And actually, let's let's start with that. Who is this front-end architect? What, what is your position about? Uh, maybe let's start with architecture first, because architect is like uh, the one doing architecture. So uh, uh, OK, the and... one that is build making buildings, for example, is also an uh, architect. Well, uh, 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 that's a nice analogy, because I think uh, uh, that, that a lot of people will uh, think about this like in the first place, like, OK. So, so uh, the architecture in the software world might be somehow related to architecture in the real world. And it is uh, true to, to some extent in many things. So, uh, for example, uh, the architects of a, a, a house, of a building, not only one who's uh, like the, the drawing some imaginary like house uh, the person should also be totally aware of all the materials of uh, physics of the requirements uh, from the client of technical uh, capabilities of a lot of engineering stuff and it's not only about uh, like the uh, high level knowledge because architecture uh, um, um, architect also is responsible for like placing windows in the right spots on the wall and like making the doors like rectangles and to connect the rooms basically. So, and maybe even to choose like electrical sockets positions for you, like the switches, mm. the lamps. Uh, to consider, for example, that in Sweden, the uh, south uh, side of, of the house is probably like uh, like going to take the most of the sun during the year. So yeah, a lot of things. So 
uh, so if we uh, try to like narrow it down, it's about designing some system, uh, a complex system, uh, satisfying uh, the requirements, uh, the constraints from technical side. For example, you cannot build like a building like this. It should be more, I don't know, like physically aligned with, with some loads. Yeah, it should stand straight up, not like the Pisa tower. Yeah, and also the most important, in my opinion, the relations, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the connections between the components. And to talk to, uh, to a client and engineer and like builders. So, yeah. Oh, okay. With, with the architects, physical architects who build the buildings, who architect the buildings, it is kind yeah. of clear. They create the mental model of the building. They plan it out, right? Yes. With the front end architect or like software development architect, in my head, it's it becoming blurry. All the time you were talking about, okay, you have to, have to think about the windows, the electrical uh, sockets, the orientation of the building. And then I'm like, isn't it what the developers do already? Like, what's the difference between the developer and an architect? The decisions part. So uh, mm -hmm. architect should should be aware of uh, a much broader scope, I would say, than the developer to consider more things, not only in like development world, but also in a, uh, uh, like a, a customer business world. So to consider some of the requirements from the uh, like a client in a plain like language, like uh, we'd like to, to have like a, a bright, like white uh, house with like big window on the south side. Mm -hmm. And then to uh, talk in another language to the builders, and then to mm -hmm. talk uh, in some other language to the project manager, and then to talk to uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, designers about the furniture, I mean, maybe, or the wall's uh, color, or something mm -hmm. else. So the architect is basically that glue uh, talking to a lot of people on different levels in different languages. Okay. So uh, developers so, is only like are are only like developing things. Uh, they don't talk to a client at least directly, uh, but uh, through the manager and all that. So it's about like much wider and then a broader picture with all the little aspects, all the requirements and the constraints from all the sides because everyone on every level will have their own uh, like some kind of requirements mm, mm, mm. and you have to like combine all, all of them into a product but and did i understand you correctly that you don't write code? actually huh? oh uh, yeah but you don't that's, write a, that's that's a bit of a myth so most people imagine architects as some kind of elders uh, sitting in an ivory uh, tower like a saruman you know it's like uh, making abstract diagrams, not uh, having like their uh, hands in the dirt, not not uh, programming anymore. I would say that's a bad architect example, in my opinion. But I agree that I uh, don't count as much as I like uh, program it like uh, like uh, before the role. So uh, my limit, I would say is to come up with some uh, proof of uh, concept repository. So not only uh, draw a diagram and think through the complex system and all the interconnections and interrelations, but I also verify it with like my own hands as some kind of a POC repository, uh, showcasing to both or I don't know both like to all the levels from like business to managers to developers that uh, first it is possible at all like to, mm -hmm. to match all the requirements like from all of you and then that it's like scalable sustainable it like doesn't like well, like a fall if it like stays for an hour for example so yeah i do a program i do uh, develop i'm well aware 
of all the technical aspects. So I'm still an engineer, but with a much broader view, which uh, basically, as Aldrey said, it's like a glue between all the people and all the levels. So uh, mm. like uh, the real world architect analogy is like one. And second one, which I like a lot. And I read about it in the book, which like changed my professional life, I would say. And the analogy is about that, uh, that imagine the company is some kind of a skyscraper with a uh, boiler room on the first floors with like developers and like fire and all that, you know, like the machinery and the, and the, bin, uh, the business penthouse at the top of the skyscraper. And basically, architect's role is to ride an elevator like top down all the day long, like back and forth, and stop on different floors and talk to uh, different people in different languages, try to synchronize them, and then pass that information to, to other uh, like uh, to other levels and uh, floor. So basically, I'm riding an elevator. So so as an example, like a practical example, like my not like typical day, but like some of my days. So in the morning, I have a, a stand up with the design uh, system core team. And then I jump into a UX research workshop, let's say, to transform uh, like uh, business goals into use cases and then into uh, UX flows. Then after that, I pair a program with a design system component library developer. And we discuss like some things like input field and like a placeholder, like how to like make it accessible or, or stuff like that. Then after lunch, I jump into the meeting with the uh, uh, PM and CMs and uh, VP of engineering to discuss some like more high level stuff. After that, I meet a product owner and we talk about business use cases and some uh, constraints and needs of uh, like front end development, let's say. And by the end of the day, I meet a uh, front end working uh, group people, which I organized as like my initiative. So it's a lot of like different levels and layers and, and it's like, very important uh, languages. So architecture is not about like some like high level language or not about very low level ones. It's about being able to talk to all of them. You need to be in, a polyglot in, in a way. In, in their language, yeah. So in a way, it's like a full stack, but not developer. It's like a full stack uh, person. Something like that. And all right. Uh, so yeah. I wrote down. Sorry to interrupt you, but I wrote down this whole elevator story that you were just uh, talking about. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, business, then UX, then uh, design systems, then PM project manager, then product, then business owners, then developers. And you probably talk about, you, you said that you talk in different languages, speak different languages with them. And I would like you to list what languages do you have to know? There was actually a, a question from Tarek Maza about, do you use UML in front-end architecture? That's one of the languages, right? Yes. Well, I I aim to. I have a book on uh, 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 software architecture documentation. It's like five uh, hundred uh, pages. It's like, and it and it contains a, a UML also. But, but I would say that today we have like more uh, uh, high level uh, services and tools. Uh, more than enough to uh, draw a diagram like quickly if you want to. But UML is definitely a like must have knowledge, but not not like quite a requirement. I mean, ten years ago, like twenty years ago, maybe it was like like one of the main approaches, like one of the main ways. But nowadays, uh, things like a Vimsicol or like Miro or similar mm. Excalibur projects. Yeah, yeah, it's like dozens of them. 
And it all uh, depends on your needs. So if you want to, and if you like to, to describe the diagram in some kind of like a DSL, uh, like, like sub language, <laughs> then it automatically transforms into the diagram. Then it's up to you. Uh, but as a but as a visual person and like visual type, I like to like uh, like draw with my uh, hand even. So I I do uh, sketch a lot, like uh, using a real pen on a paper, and then I transform it in in I like the uh, whimsical because of the their visual style. I like the the mm -hmm. colors, the arrows, and all that, but. But overall, it doesn't really matter. What does matter is uh, how readable is your uh, diagram mm. and how much is going to help not only developers implementing your idea uh, somewhere downstream, but also mm. to uh, business people and like management people upstream to understand like what's going on. So, yeah. Can we just go through the list of the uh, people who you talk with, the roles who you talk, who you communicate with, and just I don't know if is it going to be possible to name the languages? Like, what kind of um, communication tools are you using for each of them? I have a list, so we can just go. Business owners were the first ones. How do you talk uh, to them? W what are the uh, terms <laughs> in yeah. which you communicate? Well, well, the, uh, business people is so busy that they don't know all the technical abbreviations they don't know like about the uh, frameworks and it's kind of hard to explain what is uh, the component library to them and they don't uh, care I, generally like why would they well uh, they delegated that knowledge and that's the right way to like uh, be the, like a uh, like top like manager let's say but at the same time they uh, should be aware of all the benefits of all of the OKRs and the KPIs and all those like uh, uh, like uh, scary abbreviations. So yeah, they uh, hear about uh, how exactly it's gonna scale and uh, help others and what uh, benefits we all achieve. Uh, I found that it's uh, quite handy to uh, draw the same diagram in the different layers. So let's say you have mm -hmm. uh, like uh, the, the, those rectangles and those arrows, but what you write inside of, of the rectangles, it could be uh, different things for different uh, people. So let's say for business people, we can make a diagram in their languages uh, using uh, like business units and terms like business goals uh, use case. Uh, product, can we just open Excalibur and draw features. something? Here, can we try to draw something? I don't. Yeah, right. let's let's. Yeah, let's try. Do you want me to draw? You could draw. Uh, uh, you will draw. Report. Yeah, I'm okay. Draw. Let's go. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the uh, idea if, is if that. Me how to... uh, the idea is that the same diagram, uh, same uh, same rectangles. And same uh, same arrows could be uh, translated into different languages for different people, down to the engineering level. So, uh, so let's say the top level is to explain the business in terms of things like business goals, use cases, uh, features, products, feature teams, and all that. For the Developer people, it's basically uh, the, the implementation the detail level. So you speak another language, you speak in terms of technologies like, like frameworks, like Rotor, and it's React, and it's HTTP call, and that one is like uh, hold on. GraphQL and all that. Yeah. Here, hold on for a second. Let's, let, let, let's draw something. <laughs> so you're now talking to a business person, and we're developing a project. What is the most familiar and the easiest one for you to discuss? Would be? So let's uh, draw the, like a very uh, typical flow. Uh, so mm -hmm. at the top of it is going to be like business goal. 
basically mm -hmm. biz dev uh, people tell you yeah we'd like to achieve this and this and it's and a like, business it. goal in like a normal human language well maybe involving like like money aspects like we, we like not only to achieve this but also to to, to gain like a million of of money yes yeah some money yes uh below that goes a thing which is called a use case or use cases uh All right it's about uh uh, so if a uh, business goal implains, uh, explains you like what, then use case should, should explain you uh, how. So uh, so we'd like to uh, to earn like one million by by implementing a new sub product which will uh, fit into this niche and is gonna be successful. So so we should answer how how yeah let's let's like let's niche? invent something let's say yeah. by implementing um peer-to-peer -peer messaging system uh, sounds good basically yeah. but uh but use case we should also mention and explain uh, the audience the the, the target uh, group because for the same goal there might be Many different use cases. So, like for uh, mm -hmm. for like a banking Global system is going to be okay. this use case, and for a uh, food market is going to be this use case. So let's say it's peer-to-peer -peer messaging system for um, investors, individual investors. Yeah. yeah, but I would say that peer-to-peer -peer here is a bit uh, too technical terms. So it should be in more like human language. Like, uh, yes, messaging system, yes. Uh, then out of a uh, use case, I basically throw uh, the flows. And okay. that's an interesting moment because that's this uh, place in like time and space when we uh, split uh, so, so let's make it like a simple and make like a two arrows, like left and right. Uh, from what? Like two arrows from? Uh, uh, from use case. So, so I don't. Oh, from use uh, case, okay. Like left. This, yes. And then another one to the oh yeah, to the right. Yeah. So let's go with like a, a, a very typical uh, back end, front end, like war. So on the left. Out of use case, you will have something that I call uh, data flows. So uh, backend uh, senior developer, by looking at use case, will imagine some kind of like a data flow. So there should be hmm. like this uh, source of the data, and then it like flows into like another thing. Uh, yes. But what data so, flow? Uh, what what data are we talking about? Well, well, any data. So, uh, uh, so imagine that, that we have like a use case. Uh, mm -hmm. Implement like message system, um, mm -hmm. and that use case will be bring to you by your PM. Uh, to all of you, to like backend developers and like uh, uh, frontend developers. So backend developers should come up with uh, data flows, with with, with understanding like uh, what uh, data they want. So uh, how do does it look about so, right? So uh, so let's say as it's the uh, this is the next uh step after the data flow is going to be api so uh, first you need to okay. understand in uh, general like what kind of uh, data of uh flow into uh ux flow uh close not a, uh not yet the the ui yes 
So UAX flows. Um, so when you have a use case, then it is possible to parallelize the work already to mm -hmm. give uh, the UX and people the use case, and they will uh, come up with some kind of uh, UX uh, user stories, wireframes, all that. Not yet the uh, specific UI designs, but some of the ideas of like how uh, the the user journey will look like. All right. It's a more mockups done by in, for example, uh, Adobe DX, or maybe yeah, still yeah, in the yeah. Excalibur draw, or in Miro even. It's yeah, just on a high level. It's not a precise mockup yet, but it's some kind of an overview, an understanding of how to implement uh, that use case in terms of uh, user experience flow. So we have like a login screen. Then it goes to some kind of a d d dashboard. Then a uh, user picks some uh, like products from a dashboard and all that. Uh, and uh, the same kind of story should happen on backend side. That uh, what I call the data flows. So backenders will have some like very high level understanding of what I'm going to do now is that it, yeah. High level technical discussions happen here. Basically, so here, here you were talking with business people about something completely non technical. You even asked to remove the peer to peer part because it's an implementation detail. Yes. So here is just yes. business yeah. details. Yes. Okay, let's go next. Uh, I'm drawing more high level squares now. Yes. Uh, so after that, uh, data flows uh, transforms into particular API implementation. So once okay. they discuss like which data, like from so like where to where, which databases they want, like uh, the relational one, not relational one, like uh, no SQL. So high level overview of which data flows are going to be needed for that use case. And after that, right. there goes API implementation. Mm -hmm. And on the front-end side, it's basically uh, uh, not UI right away, but some mockups. Also. So some like the design, design. So uh, maybe on the left, it should say API design. So like someone, out so it's of not an like implementation yet. Decisions, it's some kind of a mockup of API. Can it be some a POC of... version, like Swagger yes, API yeah, with yeah, a stub yeah. of data, for example? Yeah, yeah, it's some kind of like a practical tr uh, tryout of what's been discussed in like previous step. And after that, right. basically, API implementation means backend. And mockups implementations means front end, and that's it. So uh, that's a bit what did the correct to say? Yeah. So here we went from business details to high level technical discussions where we communicate through diagrams and drawings and text documenting yeah. future APIs and, and such. And then here, what you were talking about is prototyping steps. When we have some some level of implementation of the API, some level of implementation of design. It's more uh, concrete. The, the but designing not... step, I would say. So like design the implementation, but not implement it yet. So design right. is more detailed uh, vision of a data flow and UX flow. All right. Yeah, and out of that, the end, end artifact, it's API as we call backend with all the like databases and connections and all that. And out of mockups, we usually produce UI or just front end, right? Mm -hmm. it's, but uh, it's an uh, actual working thing. I would say it's a, a, a very simplified but uh, working. Uh, flow. Uh, the most 
usual one, the most like common one. But if we imagine uh, something more uh, complex or more uh, zoomed in, then out of uh, use case, we might have a third branch, which is something about inflows. So, uh, so DevOps team should be aware of the use case, not not like a, a, during the a very last step when API is done and UI is done, and 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 then you ask like DevOps like, hey, we need to deploy uh, this to here and that to there, like to a three bucket. Uh, to ICR, uh, image registry. My opinion is that DevOps should be involved much earlier on the use cases level. So they have time to think uh, through the infrastructure. So, so uh, basically, so even here. it's a third branch. Yeah. So like data flows, so, your flows, something else. So right now I wrote that on the prototype stage, we have DevOps emerge because now we have something to deploy. But you say that DevOps yeah. team should emerge actually all the way up here and already be in the discussions. Yes, but that's a question of uh, the right organizational structure. Because I personally don't really like when DevOps is some kind of IT uh, support team, which you talk to uh, through uh, tickets. Like by the end of it, they are like not involved in the product development. <laughs> they just some like a separate domain and a unit, like not involved in something else. Uh, what I like to see is is, <laughs> is that each team, each each uh, each uh, vertical should have uh, their own DevOps, <laughs> at least as a representative. And then later, so that infrastructure thinking through, it starts right after the use case because it might imply some like crazy like stuff going on, like how to scale. Because if a uh, use case imply like uh, billions of users, let's say, then infra just enabled to to get there when everything is done, when um, mm. nothing, when uh, there is no room to discuss something anymore. So everything is done and yeah. just like you scale it on like billion users. Well, it's a bit too late, I would say. So they should be involved early. But for that, they should stop being that separate IT support like domain, but be a part of, of the uh, product verticals. Yeah, so they shouldn't be an auxiliary branch that is just supporting you it, it should be an integral just part deploying your stuff once it's done no it should be involved mm. and every uh, feature team uh, should be end to end like responsible for the entire process starting from the use cases so yeah. there was a good question about communication between those verticals so you can see that we have three separate verticals here the yes. backend developers the devops regardless of if we implemented them early in the process or late, doesn't matter, it's still separate department, separate branch and of specialization. And then the UI people, the front-end people, and all yeah. of them are kind of separate. Do they communicate? And if yes, then how? Through the architect. That's exactly the thing uh -huh. I was talking about. So architects should be able to speak all the languages of all the verticals. And then, yeah, just, just like to come up with the uh, design of, of a system for all of them to understand the constraints, the requirements, and the decisions being made. So architects mm -hmm. should provide uh, some kind of like a document, uh, uh, a diagram explaining to all of them like what's going to happen. And it should be aligned. Uh, because architects are uh, not the ones who like like the like a m m most authoritative persons, and they say something, and that's like how it's going to be. Architects uh, submit uh, proposals. Well, well, in well, I do submit like a, like a proposals. I don't mm -hmm. uh, tend to to like bring something like top down, like 
like here is a decision, like no arguing. I propose things, then all the parties are discussing and we come up with some agreement. Uh, maybe let's talk about uh, like uh, like when it's applicable to have uh, an architect and all the like small well, let's companies. Finish, let's companies. finish. Yeah. Let's finish the diagram. Uh, so after yes, the prototype, let's... we actually have the the product. Yes, uh, but imagine there is only one product here, right? So uh, basically, to glue them all is the role of a tech lead. So like tech lead is responsible like to glue everything in like boundaries of a product. Uh, but architect mm -hmm. is is essentially uh, stretched horizontally tech lead across the products and teams, uh, but also uh, stretched vertically to to communicate is like business goals, use cases, and all that. So, uh, so architect is kind of a uh, tech lead uh, stretched like in all the directions, <laughs> like uh, like mm -hmm. horizontally to uh, have a picture, uh, not of the like one uh, product and one team, but all of them, and also vertically to touch that uh, penthouse uh, in the skyscraper. Uh, yeah, yeah, the managerial part. People. The business owner, yes. yeah, exactly. But you were going to start talking about uh, a new topic. Um, when is it applicable to have a front uh, front end architect? Or are we talking specifically about the front end architect now? Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So I think it's obvious that it's uh, not really applicable when you are a startup and everything is done by ten people uh, sitting in a single room, right? So yeah. it's like one one uh, product, one manager, one uh, flow for everything from like development yeah, they flow, talk directly. Like, like ways of working, yeah, and all that. But now imagine that that's how I call it vertical. It's like a, a product isolated as a um, silo with uh, their own goals and end to end responsibility and ownership, like uh, from a database to deploying, so they own everything. But now imagine that you have, well, at least three of them, like five, 10, 50. In my experience, I, have, I had uh, been involved in the uh, design system development. I was uh, like a part of the core team in a company with uh, uh, 140 uh, product teams. So there's the scale, like a, a, a hundred and forty or product slash like uh, feature teams. So on that scale, you don't talk to each other not because it's like a d d difficult now, but simply because you literally don't know those like people anymore. So uh, some teams been like like spin up in some other city by some other people you, you're like not aware of. So I would say that uh, the architect role in, in general and, and like a front end in particular is it, it, it kind of depends on your company size, but not only, not limited to that. So if you have uh, those isolated as uh, silos like uh, vertical domains departments then then it's uh, then it's obvious that there should be someone in between it's like uh synchronizing all of them not on top of them because on top of them it's like uh, some a CDO or, or like a product owner in between is the keyword mm. the the architecture. So basically, uh, my responsibilities, let's say, uh, define OKRs for the design system. So uh, in like a business language, define the, uh, the objectives, the like keys and results and all that. Can I ask a question? You, were, yes. you mentioned 
uh, you mentioned the tech lead. And can we? How does architect compare to the tech lead? As far as my imagination goes, now is that tech lead yeah. is about people, and architect is about the product, uh, right? Both are mediators, but one is about team lead is about people. Okay, so ideally, yeah. in my opinion, team should have uh, both team and tech lead at the same time. So okay, uh, what what is the difference lead. between tech lead and team lead? Uh, team lead is like more responsible for people, as you say. For like in salaries, for like a backlog management, maybe or for uh, like the roles, like senior and the senior, like one on ones meetings, all that. It's more like a like a developer's manager in a way. And tech lead mm. is uh, is literally a, a like a technical leader is a person responsible for designing these. Uh, product implementation for a certain uh, local decisions and the key word here is designing and local because mm. architect uh, as i said is a, a stretched horizontally and and vertically tech lead so architect is like a, a chief tech lead in a way and chief something like uh, like a team lead in a way so okay, uh, that's that's a good analogy. It became more clear yeah. to me at least. Yeah. So if like uh, stretch the tech lead across the many teams, and and vertically you expand the boundary to touch the sky, then it's kind of an architect in my understanding. All right. Uh, you already started talking about the scale of the company where this role is applicable. And to me, it sounds like yeah. you are like you're bound to be only in the in, in big companies and deal with uh, slow processes and other things that are typical to big companies. Uh, do you like to be an architect and why? What what excites well, you about that? Oh yeah. Well, well, my my na my like uh, natural uh, uh, like uh, high bit is like uh, large companies, not uh, necessarily enterprises, because uh, as the word enterprise, it implies some like Microsofts from like nineties, you know, that like uh, like developers in like suits and like gray nested desks spaces, and, like yeah, like PCs, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but I would say, <laughs> and I've been there. And I've seen that that uh, so-called uh, digital natives nowadays they do struggle as well and because they uh, split as well into those verticals, but they uh, don't have architects because architect, like the title, the name itself, is like scares them. It's something from the enterprise, but they are too like modern, too digital natives to to involve an architect but so it's not necessarily the word enterprise but the big scale yes because if you are a, a startup then all the synchronization process is not as broken as it gets when you have like a five sub products let's say like 10 yeah. and 50 yeah so it's like a, one of the requirements in a way and what i like uh, being an architect, because I've been uh, struggling for several years in a row with my uh, professional uh, life uh, development, because I've been into uh, front-end development for almost 16 years already, and I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, but I'm still like a senior developer, de facto tech lead, and what's next? And in a way, I felt like I've already uh, overgrew the like the just the like programming stuff. So I wanted to be involved. Oh, so you can overgrow being a developer. <laughs> Don't take it so that? literally. Just like a yeah. So uh, what I like uh, being an architect is that people uh, literally pay me for thinking. Mm -hmm. That's that's like a uh, like. I, like a, like, uh, like a, uh, hear me out because I'm uh, like uh, quite a tough uh, uh, person on myself, and I always blame myself if I, if I wasn't like 
productive enough during the day I didn't uh, produce like some amount of line of uh, like uh, lines of code yeah that's Being what we're architect, for. yes it's a relief literally for me especially because uh now I see that it's like fine to like take my time to think about things so it's mm. not only about like a developing and, and this your value and this the outcome that you produce so the actual like, features uh, the amount of features you created on the day yes what I like is that I can think about things just like I don't know like uh, when walking you know and like mm. Process a lot of stuff in my head, then uh, sit back and draw a, like a diagram in 20 minutes. And after that, I don't blame myself that I've spent an hour, but the actual process, like the, the technical typing, took only 20 minutes out of that hour. So I like stopped blaming myself for taking time to think. That's mm. the Beauty of it, in my case, especially because I'm again uh, tough on myself. I'm a consultant, and that implies like having like more requirements, like like I work per hour rate, and right. that's a pressure. Yeah, uh, the the beauty is that people uh, value you and your time not just by like lines of code, you know, uh, but according to the way you think, according to the um, uh, the outcome you've produced to solve uh, the, the complexity and then explain an the solution to many levels of many people. Yeah. That's an interesting thing. The, the interesting question emerged. How soon can you estimate that uh, an architect has uh, screwed up? Like. How soon? Like, how do you know that you, for example, did a bad job if that happens? Uh, the proposal, which I mentioned already. So I'm not just like uh, uh, making decisions directly. Yeah, that's the key. I make uh, the, the options with all the pros and cons very visible to everyone. And then it's mm -hmm. up to business level to make, to approve or like disagree with something. And to like a, a fund a, a year long development of like my diagram, let's say. Mm. So the uh, proposal is the time for all the parties involved to basically to complain, to argue, to to uh, to ask, like to to uh, question uh, certain decisions being made. Because it's not Did too I late. hear you correctly? You, you don't have responsibility over the decisions you make. Yes and no. So I do make uh, decisions, but not the like, say like final, final ones. Uh, my job mm. is to make options visible. So, uh, so when I uh, uh, draw a diagram implying uh, certain decisions, I must explain why, like, why uh, has this technology, let's say, and not that technology? All mm. the pros and cons. So the people have uh, basically food for thought to to yeah to to argue or to agree or to I don't know what to like uh, uh, stay in silence forever, which m many do. Yeah, but if eventually you will start co consistently propose some bullshit, people will notice, like, what the hell? What is he doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the second part of it is that uh, my uh, POC, my uh, proof of concept. So uh, so if I am unable to to like to come up with, uh, with the repository, uh, show a uh, case and all this stuff, then something is mm. wrong. Yeah, if you're just writing something and saying, like, look, this is the this is the way. We should go this way, yeah. and then you don't show that it actually works. Then yeah, yeah, that would imply that every tower architect, like a Saruman, elder sitting on in like a high yeah. tower, drawing abstract things out of reality out of the blue. 
but I would say it should be the uh, the uh, practical too, because because mm, mm. otherwise you don't uh, verify, you don't uh, secure your own uh, choices and the mm. decision. So that's why uh, why I like the proposal flow. So I propose, uh, we discuss, and then we come up with some end final. Uh, decisions um considering the uh, the input from all the levels from like business people might be uh like no it's too expensive sorry or developers might say uh no it's too complex it implies like some not exist like like not yet existing framework is going to take like a year so yeah mm. i so propose, you write I like to have feedback mm. you write rfc's like tc39 TC proposal process probably something Quite similar. Um, not in that like a uh, dry encyclopedic language. I I uh, personally prefer like more like uh, uh, casual language. language, understandable, mm -hmm. but uh, by all the levels at the same time. That's important. You have to pick your like words to be understandable by mm. this dev and the CSS developer would say. So it's like from all the uh, like from a both extremes or like for yeah for from all the levels. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, sometimes it is even necessary to like uh, draw a diagram multiple times, uh, the same one, but in a different wording in in different language. But uh, the the uh, blocks uh, the the relations the uh, Arrows, they uh, stay the same. You just rephrase the words inside of rectangles. Well, basically, to explain the same thing, but to different people. And also, uh, yeah, so uh, design systems is like one of the greatest tools of the front end architect because it is uh, literally a tool because it lies exactly in between the product. It's a glue in a way. So like one of the tools, like design system. And it's, it's uh, and especially it's artifact as the component library. Uh, mm. Micro frontends, I would say, like quite new term, not yet a hype, uh, but uh, like, a, Kind of like my responsibility as well. So if you have those like uh, verticals, and then you want to uh, like to compose them, I can micro services, but on 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 the client side. But that's something that's... that uh, an architect decides. That okay, let's use microservices or micro frontends. Yes. Well, uh, proposes. And explains why with like pros and cons, and 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 uh, uh, provides a POC repository, and then mm. people uh, look at it, discuss, process, and maybe argue, maybe not. It, it Thank you for depends. this explanation. <laughs> so sorry, we fell out of um, uh, time boundaries. Uh, we. We were going to have a question and answer block right after the 15 minutes mark yes. that we have passed. And if you guys have any questions, please ask. We have seven, six, six more minutes to to chat. Maybe let's say like five additional. Um, I'm fine. If you're mm -hmm. fine. I want you to go to the gym right after this interview. <laughs> no, but it's it it, it was quite. Um, eye-opening, uh, I realized that I didn't understand what is the architect at all. I was imagining an architect more of um, some sort of version of team lead, actually, mm. from well, from what I see now. But yeah. The main difference, I would say, from all those roles, like, like tech, team lead, and all that, is that architect acts uh, inter-team. So, so mm -hmm. it's basically it's like not related to like one team, one uh, product. 
uh, architect is between the products and at the same time on mm. top and uh, it's like a synchronizing be... person uh can there be a bunch of architects is it usually a bunch of architects in one team in like a large large enterprise let's say when mm. you have like a uh, uh, uh hundreds of products and like feature teams they might have their own architects and then there should be a chief architect surprise surprise so like someone uh, synchronizing other architects but that's on a really like really large scale okay we have a question from victor bagu uh what can a front-end developer study to become an architect or well, let's say what can can you do to become an architect maybe it's not studying uh besides on the job experience that's a really good question i think yes uh it's been um, mentioned here and there already but i'll just uh uh try to wrap it up all uh, together so uh technical expertise is definitely a must have. So like uh, being like a, a tech lead, like uh, being in the loop of all the trends, all the frameworks, all the styling of uh, CSS and JS, Webpack, Snowpack, alternative, Pirates build, all that, like uh, like a like technical Be expertise. Advanced. Yes. Then uh, being able to speak to different people on different uh different organizational structure level so you mm. should be able to explain technical uh, uh complexity to let's say your product owner or mm. some other kind of business uh, person in your company so just to recap, it's going to be business people, it's going to be design people, it's going to be developers, yes, it's yes, going to be yes. project managers and product managers, and tech people, and programmers. Engineering managers, uh, product mm. owners, uh, uh, UX researchers. Maybe if you like, uh, like a, and maybe if it's like a large enterprise and a, a biz dev people, a, a solution architects. It's uh, oh, that's a new thing. Network architects, it's another new thing. Uh, performance architects, all kind all of right. people. So, like, uh, literally, no limits because they will invite you on on all kinds of meetings with like uh, many people. So you have to mm. be able to to explain them in different words, in different language but the same thing mm -hmm. uh, all right so you you should yeah. be technically advanced yeah an advanced developer then you have to know how to communicate to different uh, roles to different people and is that enough you you should be initiative you mm. should be uh, <laughs> brave enough to to expose those uh, maybe like uh, um uh, controversial decisions to the people and like stay by your decision but at the same time be uh, flexible enough to change something if you see some like uh, uh, some real arguments like some good reasoning that yeah it is wrong and we're gonna go there because like this this and this Mm. There is next question from Victor Voronin. When a company grows, what are the signs that there is a need for an architect? And I would change it a little yes. bit. If you want to become a system architect, can you just look at your company and see, like, say, like, oh, I see a niche. Hey, guys, we need the system architect now or front end architect. Or it is like when, when the company. When it, when it already feels like a mess. So, for uh -huh. example, you split the company into verticals, into departments with uh, their own uh, budgets and even income, maybe. So it's like mm. a silos, and there is no one between the silos. Like, uh, like uh, no one riding that elevator, like between the departments. And then it's a good sign because there must be someone. Not in charge. I don't like the word in charge, but like someone 
there is a whole picture uh, of all the verticals and all the decisions being made in all the verticals. Like someone uh, gluing it all together. So let's say you want to become a system architect. Would you look for the position that is already open or you would go to an, I don't know, HR in your company and say, look, yeah. it is a mess. I want to clean it up. I want to be an architect. What uh, well, would be your... Basically, you yes. But I would say, uh, yeah, I have a, like an interest in uh, thoughts about it. So uh, when you are a developer, like a junior, middle, and senior lead developer, doesn't really matter. The key word here, is the developer part. And the left part, that like graduation, is just a prefix. It doesn't dramatically change the uh, like the, the responsibility. Yeah, it expands the scope, maybe. It implies like like some new like tasks. Uh, like the, like a, a tough task assigned to like senior developer because he uh, the developer is able to, but their role is still a developer. And in this regard, when you uh, grow in like a career path, uh, your uh, prefix most uh, most of the times is assigned by PM, by team lead, by someone, but not you. You just do your best. Uh, they recognize that. And then they promote you by uh, giving you like a new level, like still developer, but like a lead developer. So like mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the very best one, the like strongest one. But when you want to change their role, the developer to tech lead, let's say, or to architect, uh, then it's up to you because no one, it's very important. No one will call you a tech lead or an architect, it's up to you to achieve this uh, jump, uh, this leap. Because mm. uh, in case of that, like a prefix, uh, someone calls you. Uh, from now on here, you are like a senior uh, developer because you achieved and showed us and all the results. Are Great just, piece uh, of secure. programming. Mm. Yeah. Okay, but if you want to, to make that leap, well, uh, maybe it's a matter of some uh, coincidence, like some uh, tech lead has left the company and they uh, see you as a replacement, as like one of the best ones. They will uh, promote you, let's say. But generally speaking, it's up to you to make such a leap. Uh, but but mm. how exactly? Well, try to find open positions for such a role and read uh, the requirements. Like, do you fit? Do you mm -hmm. match all those requirements for such a role? Actually, it answers the previous question quite well. Uh, what can a front-end developer study to become an architect? You just go uh, look up the open positions for a front-end architect and check what do they need because they're probably the requirements would probably differ from company to company. Yes. And yeah, there are not so many open positions for architects, but yeah. What about the next question? Do front-end architects have their own community? Uh, I don't not exactly know what it's content, about. but mm -hmm. there is a, a, a Slack channel, uh, a, a Slack, I mean, entire Slack um, community is called uh, Dear Architects. And there is like a Twitter account and a, and a newsletter about uh, Dear Architects is called. So, mm. so it's a newsletter, it's a Slack. Uh, community, it's a Twitter account. I am there, but I don't know about any other, uh, like a narrowed down, like a front end architects, because it's quite a niche. It's quite a new thing, especially if we touch topics like micro front ends, uh, very few people like do really understand like what's this about. Mm. And it's not as, as a, a hype as like micro uh the services for example so uh i'm not aware of of, of, of front-end architects community but there is a in general like an architects community and we can talk there you'll well, like find me uh 
I believe it is necessary to sign up for the, uh, the newsletter, then you get an invite for my mm -hmm. But it's called Dear Architect, right? Yes. It started as a, as a newsletter, and now it's something a bit more. Mm -hmm. There is a comment from, from Jonas, uh, I would say it takes embodying that position and presenting results and your contribution with confidence and open mind there. And yes. he agrees with yeah. you. Uh, 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 one of the main obstacles on your way towards the architect's role or tech lead role or like some other leap is uh, your own uh, imposter syndrome. Because you are mm. like so scared that you don't know that stuff, eh? and it's imposing. Like, uh, like uh, uh, they will know that I don't know, but the trick is that nobody knows. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so it's not like uh, 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 you will be a uh, part of some architect's team, and they will, yeah, but he's an imposter. He like uh, doesn't know like that and this and that stuff. No, it's not like that. You'll mm. be alone, basically, on your own. And that requires a big portion of self-confidence. Uh, uh, and be being brave, basically. So the, mm. the trick is to remember that nobody knows that stuff. Not only you, but yeah, like people around you if they agree to hire you as like a front-end architect, you are the holder of the like main technical expertise in this area. So okay. there is like no one, no one else there, like silently, uh, like a, a suspecting you of being an imposter. You know, that's 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 uh, my mindset. Okay, Maybe so they, if they already agreed that they want to have an architect, they kind of um, already accepted that you will be dominating them. <laughs> well, not uh, that you will uh, bring the necessary technical expertise in this regard. Mm. Not someone else, but you. All right. Uh, there is a question from Bogdan Leshenko. When senior dev is ready to be an architect? How do you know uh, that you're ready to, to make the leap? When the uh, senior dev, uh, at least de facto, is a, is a tech lead. When you mm. feel that your responsibilities are not limited to only like writing source code, but also to talking to manager, but also to making some kind of decisions, to mentor someone, to propose some things, and then to drive them. So uh, in my experience, in my like, personal experience, becoming a tech lead was a very natural de facto step. So mm -hmm. I wasn't like, uh, like uh, jumping over some like huge, like, yeah, something. It was just like a, a very like natural evolution. You basically found yourself being an architect already. You're like, I'm doing this shit They're anyway. Fine. So. Yeah, in my in my experience, Harrison uh, happened de facto, but I wouldn't say it was just a matter of luck. Uh, mm. And it wasn't uh, just a matter of like being in the right place in the right time and saying, hey, yeah, I'm an architect. That mm. it was like a natural evolution. So, but the uh, a very main sign, I would say, that you already feel that your responsibilities and your scope, your uh, vision is wider and uh, like broader than just being a senior uh, developer. And then it's time to maybe, I don't know, like, like a push your manager towards that direction. Say like, like, hey, I feel like I'm a de facto tech lead. Maybe it's time to make it official. Yeah, I know it's, yeah, I know it's like a just a role and a title, but in fact, it, it will not change much. So, uh, but I would appreciate that uh, the recognition, the official 
act of the recognition. And same applies mm. to architects. So when you feel that you are like a tech lead, but you are not limited to like one team, one uh, product, you are like inter team. Mm -hmm. You speak to business people to, to discussing the use cases. You speak to many teams and like uh, synchronizing them, like why tree shaking doesn't work anymore or, or like something like that. And it, and it already like start feeling like it's like it's time. Uh, yeah. The leap itself is is tough. Not only externally to like find such position, like uh, find a company agreeing to have such a role. Yeah. Well, basically at meetings in, that they had some kind of a mess, <laughs> in a way. But internally, your imposter syndrome will like uh, strike so hard. It like it like never uh, happened before because you will have to expose your your like fears, your your like uh, weak sides, your strong sides yeah. for everyone. Yes. But that's interesting. From what I understood from your answer is that technically it's not going to be a leap. You should already be doing the architect job. You should find yourself being an architect. But internally, just to gain this name, it will be Easily. an internal jump. It is a leap over your fear and uh, insecurities and these kind of things. So it's not a leap technically. It's just an internal uh, flip of a state of mind, kind of. Yeah, and I would like to repeat again, like very explicitly, that, that don't expect someone to call you tech lead or someone to call you architect mm, it mm. will never uh, happen except some uh, some exceptions when like uh, someone has left and, and they need a new candidate to like to uh, like fill the hole basically that's like one thing but generally speaking do not expect someone to uh, to call you like one day an architect it's i it's up to you it's your internal work it's your internal mm -hmm. uh braveness to call like like yourself in the first place so nobody will recognize you and like uh like give you the title it's up to you yeah it's up to you to arrange or... that meeting with your pm it's up to you to arrange that talk with your uh, product owner it's up to you to find that open uh, position and be uh, uh, brave enough to apply for it. Nobody will call you that. Yeah, you can only take take this position, not uh, earn, really. Well, All right, I would uh, say that don't expect it to happen for you. Mm, it's make not going to happen it automatically. Happen. You have to. Yeah, you have to happen. have this initiative starting from you. All right, we yes. have this. Uh, Jagadish says hi. We're being uh, a front end associate architect at ClearTex and implementing micro frontends as well, just like you were yeah. mentioning about yourself. Micro All right, but I think is another talk that yeah, that, take, that's, like another that's, hour. that's another big big conversation yeah uh that was really great discussion Kir. thank you so much for joining this stream uh thank thanks for everyone writing. for uh joining in as well uh posting your comments hope you learned something valuable for yourself um, and maybe some of you will become architects yeah, and if you have any questions like follow me on twitter and we can have discussions i'll post some interesting stuff there too so we can like stay in touch even after this uh like video stream Thanks, everyone. Thanks. I will leave a link to Kier's Twitter in the description of this video. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.